Hey, my name is Felipe and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to share with you a step-by-step -step guide of how to start freelancing on Upwork in the fields of computer vision and machine learning. So I am going to share a few tips from my own experience regarding how to set up your profile, how to search for jobs, and exactly what are the jobs you should be taking if you are just starting in Upwork. And if this is the first time you are watching one of my videos, let me give you like a very quick introduction about me. My name is Felipe, I'm a computer vision engineer, and in this channel, I share my experience and my resources as a computer vision developer. I'm also a freelancer and I freelance through Upwork. This is my Upwork profile. This is how many hours I have worked in Upwork and this is how much money I have made so far. So in this video I am going to show you how to start freelancing on Upwork in the fields of computer vision and machine learning. Let's get started. And it all starts by creating an account. So. Basically, this is how Upwork looks like if, I, uh, if I'm in a private browser, so this is not logged into my account. You will need to go to get started and then I'm a freelancer looking for work and apply as a freelancer. But this is maybe the only step I cannot really help you with because I have already created my account many, many years ago and I don't, uh, I don't remember the process. Obviously, this was many years ago. And even if I would remember the exact process I follow when I created my account, things change always, change, things change all the time. So I'm not sure if my experience is really valuable in this step, which is the account creation. But uh, I'm going to try to make a playlist where I put together many, many videos about all people where they talk about the process of creating an account. So you can definitely uh, look at those videos and you can see how exactly create an account. But unfortunately, that's something I cannot really help you with because I have already created my account many years ago. And that's something you can't create uh, again, right? That's something you can only create once and then that's it. <laughs> but let's continue. Once you do have your account created and everything is up and running and everything is ready for you to start freelancing on Upwork, let's see how to create your profile. So I am going to share a few tips on how to create your profile if you are going to freelance on the fields of computer vision and or machine learning. So. Uh, this is exactly how my uh, uh, um, how my profile looks like in Upwork and let's go one step at a time. The first thing you need is a good profile picture. It's not that you need this picture to be taken by a professional photographer or something like that. Definitely not. That's definitely not the case. But you do need to look professional on this picture, right? So. Uh, this is, for example, the profile picture I'm currently using in my uh, Upwork profile, and you can see it's like a very, like, uh, like a very simple picture. It's just me looking at the camera. I'm not really smiling on this picture. I could be smiling, but I'm not. Uh, it's with an empty background, right? Uh, it's it's like a very solid uh, background, and this is uh, the picture I'm currently using. And I think it's like a professional-looking enough picture, right? And in order to show you another example, something I think it's like a, like a good profile picture too. This is, for example, my YouTube channel. And this is the, my profile picture in my YouTube channel. This is actually a very good profile picture and something like this in Upwork would work just fine. You can see this picture. I'm not sure if you can see it because it's like very small, but it's like uh, me looking at the front, looking at the camera, smiling, a very, very good smile. And then it's like with an empty background. Something like that in Upwork as a profile picture would be just fine. It will be like a perfect, perfect profile picture. And I think that's something you can definitely make yourself with your own cell phone so you don't really need like a professional photographer or something like that. So that's the first thing I want to uh, mention. The profile picture, it needs to look professional, right? It needs to be super clean and super professional. Then moving to the description, you need to put something in the description. You need to write something. And the way I decided to write my own description was talking about all the different uh, technologies I'm familiar with in computer vision uh, and machine learning. And this is like this is like a way for the clients to know what are the technologies you are familiar with. And it's also like a way to do some search engine optimization because people are going to search for computer vision freelancer or computer vision expert or something like that. And they may search for very specific uh, techniques or the very specific uh, whatever they may search for very specific keywords 
and it may be convenient if you talk about all those the different techniques and all those different uh, niches in computer vision in your description it may be convenient and it may be not right I'm, i have absolutely no idea how the upwork search algorithm works i'm not sure if it ranks freelancers based on their description i have absolutely no idea but uh, exactly for that reason as i have absolutely no idea you may want to uh, include some of these technologies or some of these niches or some of these uh, fields in computer vision in your description uh, and also what i decided to do is to add some of the uh, some of the reviews from my previous clients right it's like i just selected a few reviews which i thought they were cool enough which i thought they were very cool reviews and i just put them in my in my profile description and something I can say about what uh, you should put in this description is because this is something that you can't really do when you are just starting because you're not going to have any previous feedbacks. Try to talk about your expertise without really talking about your expertise, right? Because the way Upwork works is that it doesn't really make sense if you say something good about you, right? If you say something like, Hey, I'm an expert. I'm like the most expert guy in the universe. I have, I don't know, how many years of experience. I have sold, I don't know, how many projects. It doesn't really say anything. You're not really saying anything because absolutely anyone can do exactly the same. And how do we know it's true, right? It doesn't really say anything. So find a way to talk about your experience. So find a way to talk about your expertise in computer vision and machine learning without really talking about your expertise, right? For example, this is a way I found to do it, which is uh, putting some reviews from previous clients. Just try to do something like that. Uh, exactly what? I cannot really tell you exactly what, but do your homework and try to do something like that. Try to talk about your expertise without really talking about your expertise. And if you want to put something like funny or something that makes you look cool or something like that, it's going to be a plus for sure. So uh, this is exactly what I have put in my own description and this is another thing you should mind when you are creating your profile. Then another thing which is very, very, very important is that if you are going to freelance in the fields of computer vision or machine learning, I would say go with both. Because in Upwork you have something that's called specialized profiles and for example in my case my, uh, my main profile is computer vision engineer and then my specialized profile is machine learning expert. So basically I am a freelancer in both niches in computer vision and machine learning. And that's uh, like a very very good thing to do, that, that's like a very uh, smart thing to do because well, for, for various reasons. And one of the reasons is that once you are familiar with building machine learning models on images, for example, if you're a computer vision expert, it's not really that different moving to a different type of data, right? If you start uh, in another project involving time series, for example, or text, for example, something that's uh, in the niche of natural language processing or whatever other type of data would be, it's not really that different. I mean, once you know how to build models for a given type of data, you can perfectly move to a different type of data and it's like pretty much the same. It's like pretty much the same intuition and so on. So that's one of the reasons. And another reason is that sometimes clients, when they are posting jobs, they are not 100% uh, sure or they are not 100% accurate on the category they choose for their jobs. I have been involved in many, many, many computer vision uh, projects which they were advertised, they were posted as machine learning uh, jobs, which means that the client was looking for a machine learning expert, a machine learning engineer, but the job ends up being super, super computer vision focused, right? So uh, sometimes it's not completely, completely accurate. And sometimes clients look for a machine learning engineer, but they are actually looking to solve a computer vision task. You definitely want to use both profiles. You definitely want to be a computer vision expert and also a machine learning expert. So you can apply to both types of jobs. 
right? Even if you're only going to do computer vision type of projects, sometimes you're going to find these projects under a computer, uh, under a machine learning engineer, right? You know what I mean? So this is something you should be aware. And this is another reason why it's super convenient to go with both a computer vision, a computer vision profile and a machine learning profile. Another thing that may be super, super important is the introduction video. You have this uh, video over here that you can just put whatever video you want. And this is a very good opportunity if you have something like very visual or if you have like uh, some samples of your previous jobs or something like that. If you have something that's like a visual representation of your skills of what you of, or what you are able to solve, what you are able to do as a machine learning expert or as a computer vision expert, this is the time to put the video here, right? If you have a video like that, it's, it's perfectly where you will put it and I think it will perfectly make sense. And in my case, all these years as a freelancer, I have tried many different things. I have used many different uh, introduction videos. I have I have made many different experiments and currently I'm using one of my previous videos in my YouTube channel because I think it's like a very good way for the clients to see my skills and especially this video it's very clever the way I uh, solve some problems related to how to make the algorithm more efficient so I thought it was a good video to put in my introduction video and that's what I decided to do if you have something like this if you have like a video where you are solving a problem and the way you solve this problem you think it's interesting enough uh, and you think it's going to be super valuable for free for clients to see then the Definitely put that as an introduction video or you can also do something like a video, an introduction video where you are talking to the camera and you are just talking to clients and telling them whatever you want, telling them you are an expert in the field and that's just like, yeah, something like that. And that may be a super good idea, like a very, very good idea if your english is very very proper i mean depending on where you are located if you are in an english speaking country and if and you speak english as a native or if you are in a non english speaking country because that's something that's super super valuable if you speak like a super super proper english like a native type of properness like something super super proper then it it could make sense to make a video where you just uh, talk to the client and say i oh, don't know hey my name is felipe and i'm a computer vision engineer let's have a call so we can discuss your project something like that and if you if your english is like super super native i think that would make perfect sense and, and if it's not then don't do it <laughs> because it may ha do more harm than good right so Whatever you put as an introduction video, it's going to be like a visual sample of you, of your skills or your previous jobs. OK, so those are the most important things for an Amport profile, or that's what I think. The profile picture, the description, the uh, specialized profiles and the introduction video in case you have an introduction video. Then there are many other things as well. You have like a portfolio, you have your employment history. Also, the education, you, you can put your, your, uh, your educational background, your, your background if you went to college or something like that. And what I think about those things is that they are not really that important. I mean, that's, that's, those are my thoughts. And if you look at the profile, you're going to see that the portfolio and the employment history is at the bottom of the profile. So it's definitely not the most important thing. It's definitely not what clients are going to look at first, right? Uh, if it's at the bottom, it seems it's not really what Upwork considers the most important thing about a freelancer. Uh, so yeah, in my experience, I will agree with that. I think it's not really the most important thing. When I just started, I thought that having good portfolio items were was something super, super important. And I tried super hard to build a few portfolio items. And the way I see it now, I don't know if portfolio is so important. I don't know if it's so impactful in order to get your first clients. Uh, maybe in a different niche it is, but in computer vision and machine learning, meh, I think it's not really that important. So if you want to put something in the portfolio, in the, in the employment history and in your education, please go ahead and do it. But if you don't, I think it's not really that important. And then another thing which could be important is your uh, hourly rate, right? 
you need to decide for an hourly rate for all of your uh, specialized profiles. In my case, I decided to put $60 an hour. When I was just starting, I, I put $40 an hour. And something you should know is that the rate you put here, the rate in your profile, is not really the rate at which you accept jobs, right? Because when you are applying for jobs, you can also uh, submit a completely different hourly rate. Maybe your the hourly rate in your profile is something like $60 an hour, but when you are applying for jobs, you can say, okay, for this job, I'm applying for something like $20 an hour. And that's perfectly possible. Or you can say, okay, this job is super, super, uh, I don't know, specific or whatever. It requires something super, super specific uh, techniques. So I'm going to charge $120 an hour. That's also possible. I mean, when you are applying for a job, you can put whatever hourly rate you want. So the hourly rate in your profile, nah, it's not really that important. I would say if you're going to freelance in computer vision or machine learning, you can take two different strategies. You can start super, super low and put something like $10 an hour, something like that, and you can just go and you can increase it over time. Or you can put whatever hourly rate you want to charge in the long term, right? Whatever your goal is. I would say something around 40 US dollars an hour sounds reasonable for a computer vision engineer or a machine learning engineer. It sounds reasonable, so you may put something like that, you may put something higher, you may put something lower, put whatever you want. The hourly rate in your profile is not really that important. The hourly rate you submit when you're applying for jobs, that's more important. And you have to follow a different strategy in that case, and I'm going to talk about that later on this tutorial. And the last thing I'm going to say about the profile is that the way you should build your profile, the way you should prepare all the different elements in your profile is by trying to convince the client to hire you, right? Trying to convince to whoever is looking at the profile, whoever is reading the description, whoever is looking at the introduction video and so on, trying to convince that someone to hire you. And you have to try super hard to do that uh, writing whatever you think it's uh, important and putting whatever video you think it's it's convenient and so on because the most important thing in an upward profile is by far the reviews from your previous projects that's by far what's going to convince any client to hire you or to not hire you so that's the most important thing so if you don't have any if you're just starting then you have to try super super hard on everything else that's the way you should look at your description, your introduction video, your profile picture, and everything else. You need to try super hard in all of those elements because you are trying to convince someone, a client, to hire you. That's the way you should approach uh, building your profile. I mean, it's not the only thing in matters because when you are applying for a job, not only you have to submit your profile, but you also have to submit a cover letter. So. In your cover letter, it's where you are going to try super hard to convince your client too. And I think it's going to be way more uh, impactful. I think it's going to be way more important in order to convince the client. So even if you don't have an awesome profile, you can just make it up in the cover letter for sure. You can make it up in the cover letter. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I can say about the profile. And now let's continue. And now it's the time to show you how to search for jobs in computer vision or machine learning and how to know exactly what are the jobs you should be taking when you're just starting. So I'm going to uh, find work. I'm going here and I am going to uh, search for a keyword, which is computer vision. This is actually the first uh, step. And what I usually do is just searching for something super generic as computer vision. And I don't really go crazy on the search term, right? You could try many different things as uh, searching for object detection, searching for semantic segmentation. You can search for like different niches within computer vision. You can try to do that. I hardly ever go crazy. I only do like a very generic uh, search on computer vision and that's usually enough. But if you want to, you can just like uh, niche down and search something much, much more specific like 
object detection, semantic segmentation and so on. But let me show you how I do it with computer vision. And you have a few filters over here and you can definitely use these filters in order to narrow down all the, uh, all the available jobs, all the jobs you have just found. And basically I will say the rule when applying these filters is try to avoid new clients, try to avoid clients with no Upwork experience or with very little Upwork experience and also try to avoid jobs which have already received too many proposals. So this is an example of a filter you could apply if you are just starting to get jobs in Upwork. Uh, also you could try to avoid the expert level uh, jobs because that that may mean if, if the client is looking for an expert it may mean it, it has super high level super high expectations regarding the deliverable regarding the freelancer and if you are just starting it may be convenient to avoid those super high expectations too right so you may want to set it in entry level and intermediate then number of proposals maybe something like uh, up to 10 to, to 15 it may be enough then if you're just starting, you're not going to get any from my previous clients. You will not have any uh, any jobs there, only payment verified. And that's a must. Please remember to uh, to click this option. Then in category, I will not select anything. In job type, I will not select anything either if you're just starting. Project length, I will not, I will not select anything either here. Uh, hours per week either, client history, this is very important. Uh, as I mentioned, you want a client with some Upwork experience. That's always important, and especially if you're just starting. So uh, I would select these options if I were you. And that's pretty much all. Yeah, that's pretty much all. So those are pretty much the filters I would recommend uh, if, you, if you're just starting. And then this will be like an ongoing experience, right? The more experience you have in the platform, the more experience you have in, up, in Upwork, uh, you will realize, you will uh, recognize all of those uh, clients which you have to avoid, right? <laughs> you will uh, recognize when a client doesn't really have a lot of Upwork experience, when a client is just... Uh, not really a good client and so on. But for now, as that, that's like an ongoing uh, learning, that's something you are going to learn over time. Just try to avoid clients with a very low feedback and with very small and with very little Upwork experience, right? Try to avoid those two situations and uh, most likely you will be okay. Then another thing regarding the specific jobs you should be taking, I would recommend go as small as possible. Take super, super small jobs, right? Very small jobs, as small as possible. And I'm going to give you an example of what's the first job I took in Upwork. I'm going to open my profile again and I'm going to one of my, I'm going to the end because I want to show you the first job I took in Upwork. So let me show you this project. It says need Python developer to create multiple linear regression model using secret learn. And if I open this job and I, we go to the job description, you can see that uh, it says need help to split training and test data. And this is exactly what I did for this project. This is exactly what I delivered. I took a data set and I split this, this, this data set into a training set and a test set. That's exactly what I did. That's the only thing I did. And this is exact, exactly what I mean when I recommend you to take small projects as small as possible. So. I would recommend you to take uh, projects like this, for example, which is something very easy to uh, to do, because when you are just starting in Upwork, you need to make sure you can deliver as promised absolutely every single job you take. That's something you always have to do, obviously, but that's especially important at the beginning, because remember that when you are just starting, you are creating your reputation, you're building your reputation. So. You only want to take jobs which you can make sure, by like absolutely sure, like 100% sure you can deliver as promised, right? That's always important, but that's especially important at the beginning. And also another reason why you want to take only small projects when you're just starting is that learning how to use the platform takes some time, right? Uh, so you will need some time in order to get familiar with how Upwork works and also you need some time to understand and to learn on how to engage in a business relationship with your clients. Those two things, the platform itself, Upwork, and how to engage in a business relationship with your clients, 
it's not really trivial it's not something easy to do so on itself that's going to take some time to learn that's going to be an ongoing process so as you are going to be super busy learning those two things it's it makes sense to go as small as possible with the specific projects you take right something very small something that's like from the technical point of view something super super small because uh, sometimes things happen when you take jobs sometimes uh, i don't know things happen and you need to learn how to deal with everything that happens and it it makes sense it makes perfect sense to start super small with the projects you take in order to make absolutely uh, sure you can deliver as promised and you can have like a very successful experience because remember you will be busy learning how Upwork works and learning how to engage in this business relationship with your client. So that's my recommendation for you. Uh, start small, start as small as possible. And that's exactly the type of projects you should be taking at first. Then about your hourly rate, but about the hourly rate at which you are going to take jobs, right? The hourly rate you are going to submit in your applications. This is a time to charge low, right? Remember that I told you, you the you were going to have an hourly rate, which is in your public profile, but then you will have other hourly rates, which are the rates you submit when you are applying for jobs. The idea is that when you are applying for jobs, you apply with a very low hourly rate, right? You want to be cheap at the beginning. Definitely you want to be cheap. Remember, for every single job you apply to, you will be competing against many, many, many freelancers, many super skilled freelancers, and many freelancers which have a lot of previous uh, Upwork experience, right? Many freelancers which have a lot of previous jobs. So if you want to have a chance competing against all these freelancers, then you definitely want to charge super low fees. You want to be cheap. At the beginning, you have to be cheap, definitely. Otherwise, I would say it's going to be super, super hard for you to get your first clients if you are not uh, cheap, if you are not uh, if you're not charging very low fees. I'm talking about, I don't know, maybe $5 an hour, maybe $6 an hour, something like that. If I show you the first hourly job I took in Upwork, it was at $6, uh, $6 US dollars an hour. So this is exactly what I mean, right? Just charge uh, low fees and uh, it's going to be more likely to be hired. And then something else is that when you are applying for a job, you will submit your profile, but you will also submit a cover letter, a proposal. And that's the time where you have to try super, super hard to convince the client that you are a good fit for that role. That's the time where you want to write like a super, super personalized, super customized cover letter in order to convince the client. And that's something that I have tried super hard to do over time with, with my freelance clients, in my freelance projects, in most of the projects I have applied to. I have written like some very, very personalized cover letters. And that's something I can definitely uh, help you with. I can also share my experience with the cover letters I have written for these jobs. So uh, you have an idea of what type of personalization or customization I mean. So I'm going to make another video or maybe more than one video sharing a few of the cover letters I have sent uh, in these few years. Uh, so, so you so you have an idea what I mean when I mean, when I say uh, write a personalized cover letter or write a very customized cover letter. But for, for now, remember that that's something super super important. And when you are writing the cover letter, remember you are trying to convince the client to hire you. So you have to think about this cover letter, about this proposal as the chance you have to impress the client. The client is going to get your your profile, which is not going to be that impressive because you're not going to have any previous feedbacks and it's also going to receive your cover letter and now it's the time to impress the client with the cover letter right that's the way you should approach the proposal the cover letter so that's some that's everything i can say for now and i'm going to make another video where i share a few of my cover letters so you know exactly what i mean so that's going to be all for today. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to click the like button and I also invite you to tell me what you think about this video in the comments below. My name is Felipe, I'm a computer vision engineer and in this channel I share my experience and I share my resources as a computer vision developer and I also make coding tutorials and I also talk about different things related to computer vision or machine learning. So if those are the type of videos you are into, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. This is going to be all for today and see you on the next video.